Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. Today, today we are going to navigate a journey uh, that only comes once every 10 years. So, we want to know, are you counting? Uh, okay. So we will begin our journey of navigating the journey into the world of the census. Now, the census comes once every 10 years, and you have to be counted. You have to be a part of this. Since 1790, the Constitution of the United States says we will have a census. Everyone will be counted. So that we can know where, how many people live in each state, how many people go to schools in that state, how many people drive on the highways, how many people do all kinds of things, how many representatives we have in Congress. All depends on whether you, you are counted. And let me tell you about the census, just in case those of you that don't remember. This is September, and pretty soon it's December, and everybody gets ready for Christmas. But do you know why Jesus was born in Bethlehem? Think about that. Why was Jesus born in Bethlehem? Because the rules of the day said that everyone had to be counted, and they would have to go back to the home, to the town of their father. So Joseph and Mary head off to Bethlehem for the census. So if it wasn't for the census, we wouldn't have a Christmas story. So just remember, even the baby Jesus is counted. So you have to be counted. That's enough of me. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to meet my guest today. A lovely, lovely, just delightful Annie Mae. Thank you. Annie Mae is going to be with us as our journey through the census. What it means, how you participate, and what we, the benefits we get from the census. So, Annie Mae, that's a nice name. Thank you, Miss Marsha. Thank <laughs> you for having me here today. Annie Mae, that, now that's an old Southern name. How did you get a name like Annie Mae? Well, I came from the Philippines. From the um, Philippines. Yeah, Southern Philippines, actually. And I know my mom thought that it's, it's a great name, a combination of her name and my, my father. So. so there you are. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's a nice name. Thank so you. So tell us, now, how long have you been well, you were born in the Philippines, but, mm -hmm. but you're an American citizen. I just recently became an American citizen. I just recently immigrated, um, well, fairly recent in 2012. So this is my first time working for the census, and it's also my very first U.S. census experience. Wow. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so now tell us, tell us all about the census. What, what is the census? So as you mentioned earlier, uh, every 10 years, America comes together to conduct a count, um, to count everyone once, only once, and in the right place. Um, it started in 1790, actually, shortly after George Washington became president, and it was actually directed at that time by the Secretary of State, Thomas Jefferson. So that was 200 years ago, more than 200, 200 years yes. ago, and we're still doing it at this time for the purpose of reapportion, um, reapportionment of the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives for redistricting and for the distribution of over $675 billion of federal funding across states, counties, and cities across um, the country. And again, it is mandated by the U.S. Constitution. So if, um, if we don't uh, count everybody, mm -hmm. um, what do we lose as a state? Let's, uh, Let's assume that a district as big as Kalihi, for instance, mm -hmm. a lot of Filipinos. Mm -hmm. 
If all of them are not counted, what do we lose as a state? There is so much to lose um, as a state if we are not, we don't get a complete and accurate count of our communities. Again, there's um, over $675 billion and we don't get uh, the, what I would say, a fair share of that when we don't count everyone. So there's actually a lot of, um, you know, studies that, you know, our audience or community can also look up to. Um, you can look at George Washington University study. Um, but for us uh, in the U.S. Census Bureau, our biggest messaging out there is be counted because that means federal dollars for our communities. Okay, yes. so we get federal dollars mm -hmm. based on how many people actually reside in, in, the, communities. in the community. That's correct. So that would mean that if you have, this is hypothetical, mm -hmm. okay, so you have a child that today is living with you mm -hmm. and they're counted. Mm -hmm. Now, however, if they go away to college and they're not in the household at the time. They will be counted uh, in the college or wherever they live they'll on, be April, counted on April there. 1. Correct. So if they go away to Wisconsin to school, they're counted in the Wisconsin count and not in the Hawaii count. Yes, they will be counted wherever they live. Wherever on they April, are at on April that 1. time. That's correct. So it would behoove everyone to have them counted before they leave for college. <laughs> well, there is a time frame that we are counting. So wherever you are at April on April 1st, which is Census Day, you will be counted there. So, yes. so now what about the schools? Um, and I read that you have a program for schools. What does that mean? It's called Statistics in Schools. And for Statistics in Schools, it just gives, you know, it makes it accessible for our students to learn about, uh, you know. Can they register in school? Register for... Can they be counted? Can they do the actual count while they're in school? Could, they, uh, could that student, let's assume they're a senior, in high school. In high school. Can they be, can they participate in while they're in class? Actually, uh, right now what we're doing with schools will be reaching out to students to remind their parents to actually participate in the census. Because it, uh, the count will be, how it's going to happen is you will get an invitation, each household will get an invitation um, on the mail to respond to the census and each household will fill that out. Um, uh, counting everyone that lives in that household on April 1st, 2020. So for schools, our uh, outreach is to, you know, inform our students, educate them about the census, and hopefully they will also relay that message and remind their parents from 2020 to not forget to respond to the census. Now, so you said every household will get a letter? Is that what you said? That's correct. Every household will get a letter and an invitation um, starting March 12, uh, 2020, um, to invite them to respond to the census online. However, we are still able to respond um, through the paper questionnaire, and you'll still be able to call as well, whatever is more convenient for you. So, and, but then there is that option now, um, for the first time in census history, to respond online as well. So it's easier. It's easier. Mm -hmm. However, in a place like Hawaii, mm -hmm. where we have so many languages, mm -hmm. um, and then they get this letter in English. Yes. Then what? Or if you go online, it's English. Yes. And if you don't have a computer and it, all of this is in English, do you have a way for them to respond? The people that don't, where English is not a first language. So definitely the census supports um, non English. Um, you know, responses or then, uh, inviting everyone to respond even if you don't, uh, you're not proficient in English. And how we're helping people to do that is that um, online, if you go online to respond, you can actually have, you actually have an option of 12 non-English languages that is supported online. So you can um, respond on that language, the 12 non-English language. Paper questionnaire is only available for English and Spanish. And we have 59 other languages um, that are supported with language glossaries and those kind of support. For yeah, because 
in, in, our, in English, our own Chinatown. Mm -hmm. We have seven different Asian languages. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, you know, the thought that they get something in English, like, well, now what? So another part of that too of what I would I do as a partnership specialist actually is we are partnering with organizations, local organizations. We're actually partnering with our state government, local government, local community organizations, because you know your community, like what you said, in Chinatown there are different languages, right? We are partnering with these organizations to help us uh, reach out to people who may not uh, be proficient in English and help them come census 2020 to respond, um, help them uh, you know, correctly respond to their questionnaires. So that's very important. These partnerships we're creating right now um, is very important to our community so we can have a more accessible census for everyone. Well, now, um, if someone that's watching mm -hmm. says, well, I belong to such and such, how can I, can my organization help? Can they just call you? How does, how does that work? Yes, that would be really great. We have uh, a team of partnership specialists right now on the island um, who speaks. Actually, one of the ways that the census is bridging the gap with um, the languages is that most of us uh, partnership specialists actually speak uh, languages other than English. So I speak Tagalog. I have a colleague, um, Sharon, who speaks Japanese, and we have our Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander uh, partnership specialist as well, um, Char, uh, Char and Elisabetta. Um, shout out to them. And we have a, even a Spanish uh, uh, person. So we are supporting that. But that's why we're also connecting to these organizations. They can um, call us um, or uh, check uh, www.census.gov for partnerships. Um, they can, you know, contact us and let us know um, what ways that we can partner because we there are very many there are many ways to partner and do the census. Whatever you're advocating for, whether you're an advocate group for people experiencing homelessness or you do uh, language translations, we could really use your help. Yeah, um, what, this coming what about uh, homeless people? Now they need to be counted too. Correct. And we are counting them. This so you have someone that actually goes out to them? Is that because they're not going to get the mail? Yes. So we will be doing a service-based enumeration um, by, at the end of March 2020 to count um, our uh, communities who are experiencing homelessness in soup kitchens, uh, mobile food vans, even in parks, uh, transitional locations, you know, parks, alleys, um, Camps that you know where they are, and we are asking help from our local communities or local organizations to connect us to you know these groups and let us know you know um, where can we um, do the count. So that's what we're gonna do. Do you ever have a case where you have a double count? Let's assume that you have a child that today they're with you. Mm -hmm. And then let's assume they just run away from home and now they're living on the street. Mm -hmm. And now somebody else counts them. So they're counted twice. Mm -hmm. I know that's hypothetical, but do you ever run into cases like that? Well, there are different scenarios, right? There's no one, obviously all of us have different kind of household, different families, different situations. And, uh, and that's why this, Educating and raising awareness in our community and how to do that will resolve these situations. So, for example, um, okay, in 2010, we did actually, we missed out on over a million kids yes. counting them. But I know your question is if we have a double count. So, anyway, I'm just excited to share that. <laughs> well, that's that's <laughs> but okay. Anyway. We need, but don't, don't keep that enthusiasm. Yeah. We need to take a break. Okay. And when we come back, tell us more about that and then how people can get involved with you, okay? We'll be right back. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Munley and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Duane Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, 
the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. I'm Marcia Joyner, and are you counted? We are on a journey that is going to take us until June about the census. And what is the census and why you need to be counted? And my guest today is Annie May. I like that. Annie May is with the census 2020. And so Annie May started telling us some exciting adventures <laughs> yes. with the last year, last time. Yeah. How many people did you say we missed? Well, uh, we missed out on over a million kids, which these kids will need um, schools, national lunch programs, you know, uh, education the next 10 years. So we don't want to do that. But anyway, your question earlier, I want to go back, is how do we avoid double counting? So when we respond to the census, we just count who is in our household, living in our household on April 1st. And for example, in case that the child lives in two different places, right? So wherever that child lives the most, sleeps all the time, uh, eats and sleeps and live all the time, that's where that child should be counted. So if they have a joint custody, for mm -hmm. instance, the mother lives one place, the father lives, and the children go back and forth every other week or mm -hmm. whatever. So, which parent gets to count them? So in that case, if the parents feel, both feel like this child stays with them um, most of the time, 50-50, then wherever the child is on April 1, 2020. On that day? On that day. Okay. Not just all the time, but where that child is mm -hmm. that day. If they day. feel like it's 50-50. Um, you know, the time that they spend with, with their child. Yeah. yeah. So that so then they have to make that decision between mm -hmm. the parents. Yeah. Who, which should, of them is it going to count? Yeah, there yeah. should be a good communication. So discuss it with your families if that's the case or situation that you're in. Okay. Now, you mentioned um, education. So part of the monies, part of this, that the census is counting for, with children, mm -hmm. it goes to you said education. What, how much education? School, school lunches, school, what, what all those kind of so like national lunch programs, Head Start, you know, those kind of very important for small ones, um, even Pell Grants, uh, those kind of uh, federal funds that our children use. Now, uh, what else does do these federal funds cover it in a community? In a, let's. Uh, let's just take Oahu, mm -hmm. not not the big picture, but just just Oahu. What does it cover? What what kind of federal grant? Fund? Healthcare, Medicaid is probably the biggest. Um, supplemental uh, nutrition, SNAP um, programs, those kind. Um, what else? Uh, like workforce development covers that. So a lot of different. Actually, my, my colleague has a, a good way of putting it. She says, Keiki to um, Kupuna. Because really, from a Keiki to Kupuna, we'll need all these services that are, up, that are federally funded. So, yeah, those are just some of the examples. Okay. And it also helps our future, you know, our leaders plan for the future. Where do we build the next schools? Where do we build the next hospitals? And for businesses, where do they... Um, build a grocery store, for example. So it really helps with the planning as well. So the so, census really touches so many so, ways. So yeah. that once this is calculated, mm -hmm. then if you are a contractor, like I said, you want to decide where you're going to build, then you go to the census and say, well, there's X number of people in this community, mm -hmm. and they will need 
this. Mm -hmm. Is that, yes. did I get that right? That's correct. The information that we provide um, in the census is very important in um, yeah, the planning and for future of our community. Now, is it best once a year, or once every 10 years, or do you update the numbers during that 10 year period? So, so the actual count that we do is every 10 years, right? right. So this is why it's a huge it endeavor. Is it is. And we do need everyone's help. However, the next numbers, those will just be estimates. Um, so you don't go the, out and count again, you just estimate. That's, yeah, the, the estimate is based on the count. And however, the U.S. Census Bureau still has many other surveys going on as well, yeah, well other, yeah. other than the, the decennial one. So mm -hmm. we have American community surveys, different, different economic surveys. So those are still um, happening I, I, as I well. I was going to say, I noticed that the economic changes, if you read it, oh, this was done here and this was done here. and mm -hmm. the, that. If you're looking for something that changes. So now tell us how and do you need people with for jobs? How do they apply? Where do they apply? Can we look at to talk about what job what kind of jobs, how much it pays, what are they expected to do, and how do they apply? Thank you so much for bringing that up. It's very important. We do need people to help us make the census possible. Uh, as, as census takers, um, you need to be 18 years and above to be a census uh, taker. And you need to have a valid social security number. You have to have a valid email address. And it's very good um, opportunity. It's flexible hours. Um, you can work part time as well. In Oahu, that's around $18 an hour um, for the pay rate. and you will be able to serve your community and as well make some income as well. So that's so really great. Do you have part-time part and full-time? We have part-time and full-time positions. The so full-time positions might be more um, office. So all you have to do is go to 2020census.gov slash jobs and create an account and, you know, answer the assessment. And, you know, from that on, I, you know, they can uh, decide where to put you or what kind of uh, positions you want to. So, so if you wanted to, like you said, be in the office, mm -hmm. then you would say that. Or if you want to go out and actually talk to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can indicate those. You can indicate mm -hmm. those. Because the hours too, right? So um, if you're, you can only work part-time and all that, those things matter. What kind of education background do you need? There or is do one. you? You need to be above 18 years. That's all. Yeah. So if that assumes a high school education to be 18 or to be above. 18 above, yes. So are, are there any special jobs other than, you know, that are specialists that you would need an advanced education? At the moment, um, we're really pushing for the census uh, enumerator jobs or the census taker jobs. Um, we will let you know or you will get, you know, we will get in touch with our partners if we need a uh, you know, other um, specialists, and they, because we also have like IT managers and all that. However, at the moment, it depends. Um, I think we just, we just share that. We, I, that might be a, um, a close position now, but we will see. Just keep in, uh, keep your, uh, you know, <laughs> see USA Jobs or our uh, advertisements for these job openings. If there are any other jobs aside from service. Now, how do we? Okay. Uh, Tell us again, and uh, we do have a, a flyer. So mm -hmm. tell us again exactly how we can apply, how we can reach you, or so give us the telephone numbers and the email address, how we can do that. Definitely. So you can apply at 2020census.gov slash jobs um, and create your account there. You may also call 1-855-JOB-2020. Um, if you have any uh, questions regarding um, the jobs, job openings, or if you want to follow up on something. Um, but to connect with partnership specialists, you may call me at 808-892-5141. Um, my email is kind of really long, but it's basically my name, annie.may.he.sokol, S-O-K-O-L, at 2020census.gov. 
um, to connect with us. Yeah, so if they have any questions, they can call you direct? Yes, they can call me if they want to participate and be a partner of the 2020 census to help us uh, educate and raise awareness in the community. That would be really great. And we're also hoping to create complete count committees in the community to, again, have that um, working committee to help us get the word out there about this. Now, I have one last question, and it came up 10 years ago, and I don't know where we are now. And that is for people who are part this and part that and part that. And there was a time when you could only choose one. Mm -hmm. Now, can you choose that you are all of these? Yes, definitely. You can um, choose uh, the race that you uh, belong to. Um, there, the options are there now. You can even, I saw you can check Filipino, so I'll definitely check that one. But um, if you are mixed, you can check uh, the appropriate boxes that um, all of the that, boxes, yes, all of that the above. pertains yeah. to you, and you can even write it down as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because that's, that's been a big thing for exactly. years. You yeah. Know? I don't think that in Washington they ever expected to come to Hawaii and find all these mixtures. When everybody's mixed. <laughs> yes, we are very diverse, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I, I just had to ask if that's been corrected. Yes, that's correct. And one last question. I think we have enough people now for another congressional seat. Do we? And if we do, how do we go about getting it? Or can you answer that, or do I need to? That will really depend on our account. So... Uh, how far we are from that, we will have to see. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure spending this time with you, and we'll see you next month. Mm. Thank She's going to so be much, with Ms. us Marcia. once yeah. a month. So thank you. Thank you again. And remember, are you counted? Mm -hmm.